Hi again, everybody. My name is Greg Anderson, and this is the Good Timekeeping Show with Greg Anderson. This is one of my vintage watches, a Casio uh, model W740 that I bought uh, right around the year 1994, give or take a year in there. So um, I call this vintage because I've had it for over 25 years. But you might say, well, I think you can buy that watch brand new today. So why would it be vintage? Well, uh, what they've done is they've changed out the module, but the rest of the functions are the same. So I'll tell you more about that in a moment. But first, I need to change the battery. See, when I decided I was going to make this video a couple of days ago, I started fiddling with the watch a little bit. I pushed the light button and everything went blank at that point. So obviously I was dealing with a low battery and I didn't know it but I have a new battery. Let's change the battery and then I'll get into the details of this watch. This is pretty standard as far as a lot of these Casio watches go. They're just four little screws here that are holding the back plate on. So if I just undo these four screws, that should come right off. Just give me a second here. And I'm going to move this operation onto this piece of microfiber cloth because uh, if any of these screws fall off, in these tiny pieces, I find that the, there's less of a tendency for them to roll away and get lost if we're here on the microfiber. Okay, so you know, this looks a lot like you would find inside any uh, digital watch these days. Right here, something very important. There's a tiny spring right there, and that spring makes contact with the back of the watch case. And if that spring is gone, then you won't get any sounds of beeps when the watch is supposed to beep. So you don't want to lose that spring. That spring may have a tendency to just fall out. So that's why when you're working on the watch, you need to make sure you're in a place where you can kind of control things. If that spring falls out, you don't want to lose that. People have told me, well, if you lose one, you can tear apart a spring bar and get a little spring like that again. I'm going to see if I can work around that without tipping the watch too much and letting that spring fall out. But if it does fall out, I hope it just falls right under this microfiber cloth and then it will be very easy to get again. So I'm just going to take the, that little piece out. And now I need to release uh, this right here that's holding the battery in place. What I'll do is I'll just take a, a sewing pin here and uh, drop this along the edge there to where I can just sort of pry that open ah, like that. See how that came out just really nice. Okay, so now I just need to slide this battery out. And some people would say, oh, you should be doing with this with gloves on so that you don't get your fingerprint oils all over inside of the watch. That may be true. Sometimes uh, gloves help. Sometimes it makes it harder to reach things. I've done this with and without gloves over the years. And I find that uh, for the most part, um, the watches still run pretty well. All right, battery's out. Let's put in a new one. And okay, I'll go ahead and do this with gloves on just to satisfy the people that uh, <laughs> would be really bothered by my not using gloves. I think it's a little bit harder to, uh, to, to tell what you're doing when you're wearing gloves. But okay, so far so good. Looks like the, uh, the battery's in place. Now all I need to do is push this down and it should kind of snap into place there on that end. Look, yeah, it looks good. All right, battery's in place. That little spring never went anywhere, so I'm okay as far as that goes. Now, before you get too excited, there's just one more step you need to do before you put everything back together. Right there, you can see in tiny letters AC, it's kind of all clear. It's a reset thing, and there's a, right down in that hole, there's a little electrical contact. So you wanna co make contact between that and this metal along the, uh, along the side there of the watch. Uh, maybe an easy way to do that, depending on the tools you have. Here, I'm gonna just put the, the sharp end of one of these tweezer ends in there, and then just touch the other one here to this part of the metal. And that's enough to uh, restart the watch. You gotta do that before you get too carried away and put the whole thing back together. I've done that a few times. And uh, you know, then you kinda, of, oh no, gotta take it apart again so I can reach that. This tricky part is uh, you've got this kind of, you know, O-ring type of thing down here that I need to put this back in place. So I'm going to very carefully place that down there to, uh, you know, maintain the nice seal. This watch is supposed to be 100 meters water resistant. So I'm going to place that back in very carefully. There's a little groove where that fits back in. And when I'm satisfied that that is where it needs to go, I will replace the back of the case in the same orientation that it was before. 
just goes down right there. And now I just need to replace the four screws. And then you can very carefully put these screws back in place. And this should go in nice and easy, not any resistance at all. So if you're feeling any kind of resistance, maybe something's a little cross threaded, you can back off. I'll just put the screw in most of the way, wait till I have all four of them in most of the way before I do the final tightening up, which again doesn't need to be super tight. You know, you, you do have that uh, black O-ring in there. So the O-ring is going to create the seal that creates the water resistance. It's not uh, the force with which you put down these screws. You, you just don't want the screws to come loose again, but they don't have to be super tight beyond just simply, uh, you know, not coming out all by themselves. So here we go. A final little minor twist on all four of those screws. And I'm in business. I turn this over and all right, now that it's running, let's get into the details. Uh, this watch, when it was brand new, had some writing up here above the face and also down here below the face. And over the years that just rubbed off. So I think it looks okay without that writing. Maybe there was a time when it was half there and half gone. You can sort of see a little bit of <laughs> illuminator, I think it said there. And down here it made some reference to the 100 meter water resistance. But anyway, that's gone and that's okay. You get a new one, it'll have that writing on it and it'll probably wear off after a few years. My main reason for wanting this watch was the electroluminescence backlight. See, I already had a watch that could do basically all the same things, this one here. And this is only a 50 meter water resistance, you know, not quite as fancy, not quite as big. But, uh, but this one here, because of the improved backlight, that's the main reason I wanted this. And so, oh, well, look, what do you know? They both work. This one, however, we need to set the time on it. And it's pretty straightforward as far as digital watches go. It works like uh, almost all the, all the digital watches you may have. Just press that button until things start to blink. And here you can set the seconds. So if I push this button up here, on the right side that will reset the seconds to the nearest minute either going backward or forward okay then i push this button down here the mode button and now i can set the hours and right now it's uh, about 2 30 pm so i can do that and uh, minutes you know so i just kind of move ahead here and let's see no, don't go too far here there we go that's good enough I'll, I'll, I'll get that more exact in a moment. And here you can see the date. So first thing I'm going to set is the year. Now, 1990 is where this begins. And I can scroll ahead to, let's see how far it will go. Um, 2020, okay. How about 2029? Oh, and right back to 1990. Okay, so this is the reason this watch is still available with a different module. This one was programmed to uh, allow you to set any date between uh, January 1st, 1990 and the very end of 2029, and then it would automatically calculate the day of the week. Well, now that we're just a few years away from the year 2029, uh, they don't want to sell this watch uh, with a module that's going to kind of run out of dates in just a few years. So the updated version, I think uh, the calendar, is programmed to help you out from the year 2000 all the way up to the year 2099. So that would be the main difference between this and one with a newer module. And I found a workaround as well. Once you get past the year 2029 on this, all you have to do is set this to the same date that you would normally set it to and just subtract 28 years. And then the days of the week will all line up. You're, you're only gonna see the year when you're here in the setting mode. So for now though, it's the year 2021. So I'll go ahead and set it to the year 2021. And again, once I get past, uh, you know, 2029, just subtract 28 years. And today's date is actually the 19th. So this is all it takes to, uh, you know, set the, the time and the date. And now if I take it out of the setting mode, it tells me the day of the week is Tuesday. And that is correct. So there's your setting mode for seconds, hours, minutes, the year, the month, and the day of the month. And it just keeps scrolling through those options. Oh, wait, now hang on. I got to show you one more thing. While you're in the setup mode here, and while things are blinking, if you do press this light button down here, that's where you're going to switch between 12 hour and 24 hour display. And so if I'm on uh, 24 hour display here, it actually affects also the alarm display. 
So let me just show you if I go to look at the alarm, uh, it is also, well, since it's 9 a.m., it uh, doesn't really change, except it still shows 24 hours for the alarm and for the main display. And again, this light button is where you access that while things are blinking in the setting screen. And now we're all set. Now, what other functions do I have on this watch? Oh, some fun ones. Okay, so let's press the mode button and we see that it's an alarm. So uh, again, this is like a lot of other watches. You can set the alarm. I'm just gonna scroll ahead here. There's no scrolling backwards uh, with these buttons, but I can scroll ahead and let's just set the alarm to eight o'clock just for the fun of it. Oh, let's make it 8.05, just so you can see that. And then up here, you can have the alarm uh, only go on certain days. So what if, if, if I want to, it could be every day in the month of January, if I did it that way. Or maybe I only want it to go uh, tomorrow morning. So I can set this to January 20th, and then that's the only time that alarm is going to go. And it'll wait another year until January 20th again before it goes. But again, if I left, instead of uh, leaving that on a specific date, if I left it on uh, just this, the month and left that blank there, then it would be every day for the month of January. Or I have the opposite uh, option here. If I wanted to go up here and change this to uh, all dashes, then it would be every day of every month. Or if I wanted to right here, if I had some reason to do this, I'd say I want it to go on the 10th day of every month. I don't specify the month, just that it has to be the 10th and those will be the times the alarm goes. So those are your, your options with the alarm. Okay, I think I'll go ahead and leave this to go just kind of normal to be every day, and I'll decide when I want to activate the alarm or not. So I'll press this button so things stop blinking. And here you see the alarm is set to go because there's that little triangle next to the uh, alarm abbreviation there. If I push this button on the upper right, then that changes that the alarm is not set to go, but the hourly signal is set to go. If I press it again, then both the hourly signal and the alarm are set to go. Press it again, and I will have neither <laughs> the alarm nor the hourly signal. So that's how you set those. And that's, again, pretty straightforward. Lots of digital watches work this way. Okay, now since I was doing things in the alarm mode, it took me right back to normal time mode. So I have to scroll past alarm to get here to my countdown timer. So what does the countdown timer do? Well, if I right now it's on all zeros. So if I start it up, it is a true 24 hour countdown timer. I can stop it and reset it. And then if I hold this down, I can choose a specific number of hours, minutes and seconds. So if I wanted to say, you know, for some reason, I want a countdown timer that lasts, you know, 15 seconds. Well, I could have that if I wanted to. And, uh, and there you go, I just started up, uh, let's see, using that button, and I get a 15 second countdown timer. And uh, another thing that a lot of people appreciate is while this countdown timer is running, you do have the local time, uh, time of day right there on the screen at the same time that you're seeing your countdown. So there you go, you had beeps for 10 seconds and then it reset to 15 seconds, it's all ready to go again. Uh, if you uh, if you just start it up again, but again, you can go anywhere from one second, uh, set your hours, minutes and seconds all the way up to a full 24 hour countdown timer if you'd like. Okay, another something you can do here with the countdown timer is uh, while I'm setting it here. Okay, I can use these buttons, of course, to, uh, you know, increase the uh, hours, minutes and seconds. And I can press this button down here, the light button. And look at that auto appeared on the screen. So watch what happens now when I start that 15 second countdown timer with auto enabled, that's an automatic repeat. So what happens is I uh, count down from 15 down to zero. And so not only did it, uh, you know, the alarm went off, but it also automatically repeated and it'll just keep going, you know, whatever time I've set it for in this case, 15 seconds. And uh, you know, every 15 seconds, it will give me that, uh, <laughs> that, that, that alarm once again at the end of the countdown. So uh, that may be useful to some folks. Some folks may decide they would rather not have an automatic repeat on their countdown timer. So all you have to do, again, is while you're setting the other, the other durations for hours, minutes and seconds, 
push the light button for auto repeat or no auto repeat. Next up is uh, I gotta scroll through my modes again to the stopwatch mode. So this is again pretty similar to what you'd see on a lot of digital watches. Start and stop your stopwatch there. Use this adjust button for your split time or your lap timer. Uh, stop the stopwatch and you can reset it again using that adjust button up there. And again, while you're in stopwatch mode, you do get the uh, local time right up there in the corner. Now when this watch is in stopwatch mode, you have minutes, seconds, and hundredths of a second for the first hour. But when it goes beyond one hour, everything shifts over and you'll see hours, minutes, and seconds there. Uh, and that will continue all the way up until uh, if you go 24 hours, it will reset itself to zero and keep going. And when it gets back down to below one hour again, that's when you're going to see uh, minutes, seconds, and hundredths of a second in this display right here. So now, again, it's uh, counting hours, minutes, and seconds. If I stop the watch, and it won't show hundredths of a second again until it goes back all the way to zero and starts out with less than an hour, that's the only time you're going to see hundredths of a second in the stopwatch display. But otherwise, you know, pretty, pretty standard stuff as far as stopwatches go. And those are the main functions here. The next thing, of course, is the thing that attracted me, and that was the light. And again, this was the main reason I bought this watch was this backlight. I just love that nice, clear, blue uh, electroluminescence backlight that lit up uh, the background so uniformly, as opposed to, you know, the typical backlight on a lot of watches from that era was this little incandescent thing in the corner or on the side, which sort of works. You know, it's better than nothing at all. But isn't this one so much better? So yeah, <laughs> that's why even though I had this watch, I really wanted to try the one with that improved, nice, bright blue backlight. How do you like that? But here's something fun you can also do with this light. When I'm in the regular timekeeping mode, if I press and hold this button up here, the uh, uh, start and stop button, it also says on off light. So if I press and hold this, watch what happens just for a few seconds. Ah, now you get this icon that shows up on the screen. And what that does is whenever the hourly signal goes off, the entire screen, the backlight flashes just a couple of times real quick, uh, you know, every hour when that happens. So during the day, you won't maybe notice that. But uh, at night, it's kind of nice to have this whole displayed, the light just flashes for a moment on your hourly signals. And also it's going to blink when the normal alarm uh, goes off. So w when it blinks, it'll look and sound something like this. And the alarm goes for 20 seconds. And then you also see right here when the countdown timer reaches its end, and when you have that light uh, icon activated, you also get the blinking at the end of your countdown timer like this. And that's about it, really. A uh, nice watch. I've enjoyed it all, all through these years. I did replace the original resin watch band with this silicone watch band. I found that the original Casio band uh, developed a little crack right in this area where I was bending it every day to, you know, put it on and take it off. So I found that the silicone strap here has held up much better, and I found one that was a pretty good match as far as size and everything. So. Um, that's the only thing that you might run into if you get one of these genuine, uh, you know, direct from Casio with the genuine uh, watch band on it. That watch band may fail and uh, you can try putting a different watch band on it. In my case, uh, silicone has worked well for me. 
as a replacement for the original band. Uh, again, 100 meter water resistance. Uh, the, the screen is, uh, you know, just, just flush with the top of the watch there. So susceptible to scratching just a little bit, but you can see how much I've scratched the rest of the case around here just from uh, normal wear and tear and use over the course of 25 years. And considering the little gouges and scratches along the sides here, I think the screen has held up really well over the years. So, hey, if you get one of these today, you know, maybe 25 years later, it will look just this good. And, you know, it'll have that automatic calendar that's uh, working well for you all the way up through the year 2099. All right, that's all for now. Uh, you can find this watch for somewhere in the range of uh, in the 30s. So somewhere between, you know, 30 and $40, maybe on the low end of that range, if you're careful enough. And um, yeah, uses uh, the battery you saw, the CR2016 lithium battery, which should last for a few years uh, with normal use. All right, and that's all for now. So I will join you again, and I hope you will join me again for another episode of the Good Timekeeping Show coming up very soon.